Hey, fourth grade, Mrs. Redmond here. So good to be with you today for our very last fourth grade video. I can hardly believe it. We have really come through such a crazy year together and I'm so proud of all of you. I wanted to give you just a minute to see my koi fish. I know I talked about that often. They're coming along and hopefully you can see them down in here. Swimming around, they see me so they wanna to come to the top. So they've been swimming around and they've been really healthy and doing great. So I'm gonna make my way back over to our chair here and just give you a little bit of info. So the next day, uh, today and tomorrow, is really going to just be uh, you working through the materials that I've given to you. So keep doing the math test, finish that, put that in your red folder. You're going to be working on the next comprehension check, studying the moon, which um, is going to be really fun and fascinating. I'm so sorry it's so windy in my backyard, but I just had to be outside. So you are going to read for the next two days pages 265 through 268 and then do the comprehension check. I put the page numbers in the email and uh, then go ahead and put that comp check in your folder. History, the comp check is finished from today's lesson till tomorrow. You can just finish reading the chapter and just finish uh, reading there about the Revolutionary War. Put the comp check from earlier this week in your return to school folder, as well as your George Washington packet, okay? And then Bible, you are finishing the science chapter by talking about the origin of the universe, choosing your favorite day of creation, and um, drawing it for me and putting it in the return to school folder as well, all right? So let's finish Mr. Popper's Penguins together today. If you have chapter 20, you can go ahead and pull that up. It's called Farewell, Mr. Popper. And I thought to myself, well, we're kind of saying farewell today, so maybe this is a good chapter for us to end on. So if you're ready, let's get started. It was a hard decision to make long after the visitors had gone. Mr. and Mrs. Popper sat and discussed what was best for everybody. Mrs. Popper could see the advantage of both offers and she pointed these out without trying to influence him. I feel that the penguins are really your responsibility, she said, and you must make up your mind. It was a pale and haggard Mr. Popper who was ready to announce his decision the next day. Mr. Klein, he said, I want you to know how much I appreciate your offer of putting my birds in the movies, but I am afraid I have to refuse. I do not believe the life in Hollywood would be good for the penguins. Then he turned to Admiral Drake. Admiral Drake, I am going to give you the birds. In doing this, I am considering the birds first of all. I know that they have been comfortable and happy with me. Lately, though, with the excitement and the warm weather, I've been worried about them. The birds have done so much for me that I have to do what is best for them. After all, they belong in a cold climate and then I can't help be, be, being sorry for those men up at the North Pole without any penguins to help them pass the time. Your government will thank you, Mr. Popper, answered the Admiral. Congratulations, Admiral, said Mr. Klein. Maybe you're right at that, Mitt Popper. Hollywood might have been too much for the birds. I wish you'd let me make one short movie of them here in New York, though, before they go. Just some pictures of the sort of thing they do on the stage. You know, we'd show the film everywhere with an announcement that these are the famous popper penguins that are being taken to the North Pole by Admiral Drake of the United States Arctic Penguin Founding Expedition, or something like that. I'd like that very much, said Mr. Popper. We'd pay you, of course, continued Mr. Klein. Not a fortune as we could have if you'd let us give them a contract, but say $25,000. We could use it, said Mrs. Popper. It will be a very quiet at 432 Proudfoot Avenue, said Mr. Popper when everyone had left. Mrs. Popper did not answer. She knew that nothing she could say could really comfort him. However, said Mr. Popper, now that spring is here, a lot of people will be wanting their houses painted, so we'd better be getting back. Anyway, said Bill, we've had 10 whole weeks of vacation right in the middle of the year, and not many children in Stillwater can say that. You know, that kind of makes me think about our story together, right? We've kind of had 10 whole weeks of vacation right in the middle of the year, and there's so much that we could say about um, 
having to be done with school in March and do all of this from home, but I just want to say to you what a joy it's been to be your teacher and how much I care about each and every one of you. And I'm going to be praying for all of you over the summer. If you want to come into school on Friday, I'll be there from 8 to 3 and um, you can bring your books back and just say a quick hello to me and I would love to see you. I'll have my mask on and um, I'll be working in my room. So um, if you'd like to come in, you can. If not, and mom and dad just want to drop the books off on their own, that's okay too. Uh, don't forget to bring everything on the list that I sent in the email over the weekend. And also for Mr. Popper's Penguins, be sure to include your story map. And now that we've finished the book together, you can definitely write in a good sentence for what happened at the end of the story, okay? Well, fourth grade, I've loved being your teacher and I can't wait to see you as fifth graders. I'll see you soon. Bye.